by popular demand. Submechanophobia is back, and this time we're not alone. Please welcome our special guest, However Man, from the channel However, to explore another 10 Submechanophobia animatronics. If you want to learn about science and how our world works, go and subscribe to However. Links in the description and in the comments. Loch Ness Monster Prop We don't know about you, but it has always been a fantasy of ours to discover some long-lost treasure. Well, that's precisely what happened to a lucky crew operating an underwater robot in a famous Scotland lake, rumored to be the home of the mythical Loch Ness Monster. The crew stumbled upon a piece of forgotten movie history, the long-lost Loch Ness Monster prop used in the filming of the 1970 movie The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, directed by Billy Wilder. Even though this is not an animatronic, we thought this 30-foot model that made film history deserved a spot on this list. This 9-meter-long model was just a giant head attached to a long neck. The two bumps that are usually associated with the Loch Ness Monster were noticeably absent because the director didn't like them. However, the humps had hidden buoyancy aids, and as a result, Nessie disappeared under the waves while being towed to its destination and was thought to be lost forever till this crew found it again. This four-ton model was discovered at a depth of 180 meters, with eyes bulging out of its head. The model is made to look as if it's angry, with giant teeth and flared nostrils. It honestly does look scary. The crew said that the prop was too heavy to drag to the surface, and maybe it's for the best, for the structure is nightmare-inducing. Promotional Installation for the Haunting of Bly Manor You have probably heard of The Haunting of Bly Manor, right? The famous drama gothic romance on Netflix? Well, did you know about this promotional installation at the Bryant Park Fountain in New York City? That's right, folks. There was something in the water in Bryant Park, as the billboards near the fountain specify. Imagine just strolling casually near the fountain, when suddenly you come across a billboard announcing that there is something in the water. Now you are torn between wanting to go check it out and running the hell out of Dodge. Your curiosity wins out, and you slowly walk towards the fountain, only to see a ghost emerging out of the water. Spooky, right? That is exactly what the production team wanted. We must say, this is some brilliant advertising. The ghost looks as if it had been lurking around in the fountain, waiting for its perfect victim. Although we could not find any information about the specifics of the installation, with its jet black hair framing its face and the steam billowing all around it, it certainly makes for a terrifying sight. Kappa Animatronics Far away in the town of Fukusaki in Japan, okay, not that far away, there's a pond in the Ujikawayama Park, a pond with scary monsters just waiting to grab you and pull you under. If you stare into the murky pond long enough, you'll see the water begin to bubble, and suddenly there are three huge frog-like monsters appearing out of the water. This frog is known as Kappa and is a supernatural monster one of the yokai. It dwells in the water waiting and watching for the perfect moment to jump out and scare you. The town of Fukusaki was the birthplace of Kunio Yanagita, who's known as the father of Japanese folklore studies. To honor Yanagita, this town has been using realistic monsters, yokai, as their town mascots. This strategy has generated a buzz around this town and has apparently attracted 1.7 times more tourists and visitors to the town, developing the economy. Seems like no one can resist the lure of supernatural entities. There are three kappa, one big kappa and two little ones. The big kappa is called Gajiro. These animatronics were masterminded by Tomo Ogawa. These monsters are humanoid, with a beaked mouth and sporting reptilian skin. Their hair is coarse, and their hands are outstretched in the universal gesture of, I am about to get you. Combine this with their webbed fingers, open mouths, and their huge eyes. 
and it is truly a scary sight. The Kappa have a special plate on their heads that gives them their power while they're on land and must be filled with water at all times. The Kappas surface only once every 30 minutes for a few seconds at a time. The Kappas are cleaned by employees who take inflatable rafts to the middle of the pond. Can you imagine being that close to the scary monsters for long periods of time? This town is definitely worth a visit. Jumanji Crocodile If you have watched the original 1995 Jumanji film, then you already know that crocodiles are one of the biggest dangers in that movie. This animatronic crocodile was created by Amalgamated Dynamics Inc., which is an American special effects company. One of their specialties is animatronics, and they have become one of Hollywood's go-to studios for animatronics, thus bringing many creatures to life. The Jumanji Crocodile has got to be one of their most famous works, a true accomplishment. This is one of the most realistic animatronics we have ever come across. At 750 pounds, this thing was a beast. It is 15 feet long, and you will never believe this, but it can swim. We are pretty sure that if we ever came across this animatronic in a lake, we would run for our life. Better not to take any chances, right? The best feature, though, of this animatronic is that it was made to ride. There is, in fact, a lot of footage of people doing just that, a mini scary ride. Apart from that, this animatronic crocodile has eyes that move. It has a body that was made to mimic actual crocodiles. This is one scary croc. It probably won't eat you, although we make no promises. Monster Mansion Next up, we have a sub mechanophobia inducing ride, the Monster Mansion at Six Flags over Georgia. This attraction takes you on a boat ride through a flooded mansion. The story behind it goes like this. Humans have been invited to a monster picnic. All along the ride, you encounter monster animatronics of various shapes and sizes. There's even a huge banner welcoming humans. But the monsters are anything but. The humans are given a warning in the beginning to stay off the marsh. But of course, that does not end up happening. For where's the fun in that? The boat purposefully veers off course into dark and swampy waters, where the monsters are especially unfriendly to humans. The animatronics have scary-looking faces, and some of them keep moving their heads back and forth in an eerie way. The state-of-the-art lighting, as well as the monster sounds, are enough to send a chill down your spine. As a special treat, you'll also get to hear the screams of your fellow passengers. The humans eventually make it out safely, but they are unlikely to ever forget this experience. Anaconda Next up, we have yet another animatronic from a famous film, The Giant Snake from Anaconda. Whether you remember the plot and the characters or not, you are sure to remember the giant snake. At 40 feet, this snake animatronic developed by Walter Conti and his Edge Innovations team is a technical marvel. This movie was inspired by recent discoveries of snakes that were up to 35 feet long, capable of swallowing entire humans. But of course, unlike animals like dogs or cats, the crew could not use a real snake unless they wanted to be snake food. So they decided to use an animatronic instead. But creating a snake animatronic, especially such a huge one, was no easy feat. They had to replicate the curved gliding movement of the snake to make it look natural. A large number of individually controlled joints had to be manufactured and linked together in a very slender and sleek form. Not only that, but the joints also had to be controlled together so that it would look like the snake was moving on its own in the film. In the end, it took 60 dual-axis hydraulically powered joints with a total of 120 degrees of freedom, or DOF, to achieve this. Apart from having so many joints, one of the greatest accomplishments of this animatronic is that all of these joints are linked to one another for synchronous movement, so each joint is affected by all the joints upstream. Since the movie would be shot underwater, all elements that went into making the animatronic had to be waterproof. However, during filming, the controls of the animatronic suddenly shorted out, and the movie star Jennifer Lopez was in the line of fire when this happened. She was almost struck by more than one ton of metals and wires, which could have ended up electrocuting her. Fortunately, nothing of the sort happened. The only result was some erratic movements of the snake, 
which they even included in the movie to make it more realistic. The snake is one of the most complex serially linked robots to exist in the world. The eyes, tongue, and lips of the snake were all made to move independently. The snake's outer skin was made of rubber and looked pretty real. It was truly a marvelous feat of engineering, and it was developed by a team of 80 people in only seven months. Jenggu Animatronics In China, there's a company known as Jenggu Tech that specializes in making very scary life-size animatronics of animals, marine life, insects, and even ancient creatures such as dinosaurs and mythical creatures like dragons. Many of their animatronics have found a home in SeaWorld on the Gold Coast of Australia. They have a wide array of animatronics known as Creatures of the Deep. But unlike what you would expect from such a name, these creatures are not underwater. But they do indeed provoke submechanophobia and megalophobia owing to their sheer size alone. Creatures of the Deep features many marine animals, including ancient ones such as aquatic dinosaurs, as well as mythical creatures such as the Kraken. Some other attractions include the Loch Ness Monster, sharks, and other Jurassic animals. SeaWorld opened this exhibition to the public in 2016. There are over 30 animal exhibits, and you can enjoy them both indoors and outdoors. There's a pathway for tourists to stroll through with the exhibits on either side. These exhibits are made of soft silicone, and to add an extra touch of realism to them, they're made to move their limbs and head, rotate their eyes, sway their tails, and blink. The animatronics are even made to look like they are breathing. Combine this with the sounds they make, and you can almost believe they're real. Their sizes vary from 0.5 meters to an incredible 30 meters in height. Shark Knight. We have yet another masterpiece by Walt Conti and his Edge Innovations, the shark animatronics from Shark Knight 3D. While most of the sharks used in the movie were the result of visual effects, the director wanted animatronic sharks for the major attack sequences. The sharks in question were a hammerhead shark and a great white. Like every other animatronic they have created, Walt Conti and his team blew this one out of the park too. In fact, he called these animatronics a marriage of art and technology, and we must say we agree. Conti made two different versions of each shark, a swimmer and an attacker. The former was used to film scenes where the sharks are silently lurking, while the latter was used for the scenes that require intense bursts of power from the sharks. Both of these versions required very different internal mechanisms and different horsepowers. The sharks were 10 to 12 feet long. The swimmer weighed about 700 pounds, while the attacker was a whopping 1,100 pound beast. Conti says that they began work on the shark by taking inspiration from thousands of photos. Apparently, they started with a real set of jaws for each shark, so as to get the anatomy right. They also worked very closely with biologists, while making the molds out of clay and painting the skin, and building various body parts. They are certainly dedicated to their craft. Since the sharks had to be neutrally buoyant and look like real sharks, the team had to take care to use incredibly light materials like aluminum and titanium. The attack shark could not be naturally buoyant, so it was attached by a wire to a crane. Then it was mounted on rigs so that it could be launched forward at 30 miles per hour. The animatronics were truly a remarkable feat of engineering. Sea Monster I Corsari Located in Gardaland, one of the most iconic theme parks in Italy is the Sea Monster of the I Corsari ride. It's a boat ride that takes place in the dark and is known as the Italian version of the Pirates of the Caribbean. The story goes like this. Guests embark on a journey underground where they're chased by the ghosts of the Corsairs. They come across dueling pirates and sunken shipwrecks along this journey, complete with the occasional sea monster. Although this ride has many scary animatronics of supernatural creatures, the main attraction is the sea monster of the pirate ghost. Amidst flashing red and green lights, he rises out of the water. You first see a serpent-like tail, which then ascends to reveal his humanoid face attached to a very long neck. His eyes flash terrifyingly, creating a terrifying sight. 
The sea monster can move his face and his jaw up and down, much like he would if he were to grab you and eat you. Not only that, his eyeballs are completely white without any pupils, adding to the scary sight. This ride took as many as 30 partners to be completed and was open to the public way back in 1992. Recently, in 2018, the ride underwent some renovations, including a 3D video mapping technology and an entirely new and much scarier soundtrack. Don't miss this one, folks. You will probably have nightmares after the ride, but it will totally be worth it. Moby Dick in Wakefield, Massachusetts, there is an amusement park called the Pleasure Island, also known as the Disneyland of the Northeast. But don't let the name fool you. This park had an attraction called the Moby Dick Hunt, modeled after the whale that brought about the end of Captain Ahab, which is said to be one of the scariest underwater animatronics ever. In this attraction, guests had to take a boat ride to hunt the whale. Guests would embark on a 30-foot-long whaling boat and take a ride around a human-made lagoon in search of the great white whale. During the ride, they would come across several obstacles such as rhinoceroses, cannibals, and even some plastic dolphins that jumped out of the water. After escaping the cannibals, guests would watch the whale rise out of the water, as if on cue. This ride was the mastermind of Marco Engineering, created three years after the Gregory Peck version of the Moby Dick movie had been released in 1956. At 70 feet long, the whale was massive and weighed around three tons. This was quite a feat to be achieved in the 1950s if you think about it. As if the sheer size of it was not intimidating enough, it would bare its teeth after rising out of the water. It also had water spewing out of its head. Unfortunately, a whale this size, when technology had not advanced as much, meant a lot of maintenance issues. The park closed down after a decade of being in business. The land is now occupied by Edgewater Office Park. The pond in which the great white whale resided is still part of the property. As for the whale, well, we cannot tell you for sure, but the rumor has it that Moby Dick still remains in the pond, waiting, watching. Special thanks to However for being part of this video. Go and subscribe to However. Links in the description and in the comments. It's time to wrap up this video, everybody. But we know you can't get enough of submechanophobia videos, and Theme Park Crazy is the place you want to go to see more of these attractions. They're covering many more underwater animatronics that will send chills down your spine. And even if you don't want to watch more submechanophobia videos, you will find some of the most amazing theme park related content on his channel. So go check out his channel and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.